That's right, I'm mixing companies. You've never seen that before. Mm, kiss now, kiss. Mm, 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 yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Hello, you dirty potters. How are you today? Oh boy. It's a, here comes the part two choo choo train. Open up. Hey, you guys made me do this. I didn't want to do this. I, I already recorded this entire episode and then I was just going to post it. I was just going to post it regular style. But then, like, I read all the comments from the part one of this video. And then I was like, well, I have to explain myself because none of you read the description below, which is wild. But I figure instead of going off on you like the disappointed daddy that I am, I might as well just teach you something about glazes because I assume the high majority of you don't make your own glazes, but instead you buy bottle glazes like this, which is why you're watching this video. And if you know how to make glazes, and you're watching this, you probably already know this information, but that's probably not a lot of you. For those of you who didn't see part one of this video, I ended up testing the base as I usually do because I'm a glaze maker and I like to test bases before I test them with combinations. But I didn't say that directly in the video, instead I put it down in the description below. Luckily, a couple of you read the description below, so you already knew what was going on. So in today's part two of Mako Flux, we're testing the glaze how the company assumes we were going to use the glaze in the first place. Which I, I don't regret doing it at all, to be realistic with you, because the Mako Flux comes out great by itself on a red clay body, and we would not have known that if we didn't test the base, baby! I'm not mad at you, but I'm also 100% not wearing pants and didn't do my hair or makeup at all because I had to sit here and explain to everybody what's going on in part two after I already recorded the episode. All right, I'm a little tiffed, I'm not gonna lie. But again, I figured I would make this a teachable moment. The high majority of glazes, and I mean the high majority because there's always someone who's gonna point out the exception to the rule, are made out of about, let's say three things. It's, it's technically really five, but we're gonna say three things to raise or down this conversation. The high majority of glazes are made out of three things, which are glass formers, stabilizers, and a flux. Glass formers usually come in the form of something like boron and majoritively silica, right? And that's kind of where our glass comes from. A stabilizer usually comes in the form of alumina. There's a bunch of different names for it. It can be called an anti-flux. It can be called a stabilizer. Some people just call it clay. Some people call it alumina. There's a bunch of different things that it can be called, but they all basically do the same thing. And then there's the flux. The flux is what allows the glaze to, and I'm going to say this and it's not accurate, but you're going to understand it in this form, melt at a certain temperature. So when you're looking at a glaze, you have the glass, the stabilizer, and the flux. In reality, what's going on is that silica doesn't really melt into a ridiculous temperature oh that the high majority of us don't have the ability to get up to even with really good kilns, especially in our homesteads. We're not getting up to the temperature that silica melts, and we are for dang sure not getting oh up to the temperature God. that alumina melts. So we need something like a flux to bring that temperature down in order for it to be a cohesive body of glaze. In a nutshell, that is how glaze works. Now, companies know this, so whenever they name something like Amazon Mako Flux, or Mako Flux, or Blah Blah Flux, or Fluxity Flux Flux Flux. They're assuming that we know this information as well, so whenever they name a glaze like this, they're essentially hoping that people make that correlation and go, oh, it's supposed to make things run, because flux is the things that make things melt and reach maturity point. As the fantastic successful makes at least one to two new glazes for the community to use every single year, glazy star that I am, I know this, I'm aware of this. So please believe that when I made the first video testing the base and everyone in the comments below was like, oh, you're supposed to put it on their stuff, it's supposed to melt. Mm. I know, I 100% know. In fact, I have already prepped a second video, which I had to interrupt to explain this to you, that you're gonna be watching today to test this glaze over other glazes as it was intended to be by the company, as per the name, because that's what a flux is, because that's what a flux does. I wanna thank you for making me come out in my ugly face, undone hair, and uh, no pants on pajamas, because I sleep naked and uh, making me explain myself. And by the way, to any other glaze makers like myself out there, I know that I just razored down all of the real terminology to like the, the, the bottom of the barrel bar. But I, I, I just wanna let you know, I, I don't care. Whatever you're about to say in the comments below, I don't care. 
I don't care. L look at me. Look at me. I make glazes that look like this, and I've taken the classes. Any corrections you have? I don't care. Okay, well, this has been Amateur Glaze with Daddy Dante. Hopefully you found that some type of informational. Uh, I want to remind you to click all the buttons for YouTube so that I don't get demonetized because they do be demonetizing me. Um, have a great time watching the video. Leave a comment down below about your favorite part of the episode. I Hopefully it was this part. And don't you ever question me again. Today is going to be part two of our Glaze review of Mako Flux. In the first video, we just tested the base. This is purely because I like to test bases, but the high majority of the time, whenever you see a glaze and it says something, something flux on it, that is specifically a call to people who know how to make glazes or know what glazes are made out of to tell them, hey, you should probably put this over something else. I know that technically speaking, the company wants us to put this over, especially other darker glazes, to get more of a runny effect, as is the name Flux. But testing the base is something that a lot of glaze people do, and I'm one of those people. I test the base of almost every single glaze I come across if it's meant to be an additive to another glaze. I'm also kind of cheating and doubling up the kiln load, so even though I technically just tested the base, you probably know what it looks like, but I have no idea what it looks like. It could have turned red, it could have turned white, it could have turned brown, I have, I have no idea. But in today's video, we're gonna be using this glaze exactly how the company assumed we're supposed to use it. Notice Stay me, there. senpai. Stay there. Please notice me, senpai. Stay there. You know Please what? Notice me, senpai. Do that. Do that to you. You like that? Hmm? Hmm? Yeah. What do you think? What, what, what are you gonna do now? I'm actually fairly excited to see how this glaze runs over some of my products because I saved a couple of things specifically to put this over. So this right here, as many of my patrons know, is one of my dragon scale mugs that I made maybe about four or five years ago and just recently started making them again because I, shh, don't tell no, I might start going to Ren Fairs. I'm gonna dress up like a LARPer, Let's save a princess, Let's drink out of dragon scale mugs. So this dragon scale mug is what we're gonna be using for our white test style. I am very excited to see what happens with a lot of the texture that's going on in this clay body. I also have a redstone clay body. It's more of an amalgamation of recycled clay, but I also have this, which has fantastic texture on it as well. We got our test styles, and with that out of the way, let's get started. Bury my face in your chest, you were my eyes from. But what I'm seeing from you now, it just don't look right. And what I'm hearing from you now, it just don't feel right. And what you're telling me, please God, it ain't the truth, right? That you would leave me on the curb so you could get right. That you would build me up to know that I could reach heights. Say my foundation's hard as rock, but when the shit bites, my knuckles need white and must have need fight. The man who told me not to quit, he need to see white. The man who told me not to quit, he need to see white, white, white. The man who told me not to quit, he need to see white. I want to know with you. Because so many of you have faith in this Mako Flux, I decided to put an Amico glaze on a mug and try that underneath this. We're gonna try PC-15 Satin Oribe underneath Mako Flux. Cause now it's liquid, liquid and insecurity, sanity gone and certainly lady birth me the world to me. I hit a verse from your mouth, but they ain't of any worth to me. Some kind of nerve you got, you should have. This here is one of my dragon mugs with Brandy's Red and Mako Flux over it. I didn't show myself actually glazing this in Randy's Red, but it is 100% Randy's Red. I know this is Randy's Red because I had to redo it, seeing as I thought that this over here was Mako Flux and Randy's Red, but it's not. This is a duplicate mug because I make more than one mug a high majority of the time if I think they're gonna sell well at a Ren Fair anywhere else. This is Randy's Red, but you can see a clear difference in between the two topper glazes here. This one's Mako Flux. This is technically a crystal glaze that I thought was Mako Flux because I was working too closely with them next to each other. It's two white glazes next to each other, sitting in a hot tub, five feet apart. The bottle, however, I am far more interested in as number one, it is 
glazed with a glaze called Red Oil Spot. A glaze I got from Glazy from a man named Jake Glaze. I will put his profile down below. He deserves the credit for this glaze. Usually with a flux glaze, you wanna put it partially glazed with something like the Dragon Mug here so that you can see it kind of transfer color down as it's going and melting. But this one, I just doused the entire thing in Mako Flux just to see if there's a reaction. Jake Glaze's Red Oil Spot is pretty good at kind of uh, separating itself in color, I found out, especially when you mix it with things like Lynette's Opal. And I wanna see if it works out in the same manner if I douse the entire thing. I also thought it'd be really sad if I only did like half of it, and I was like, man, I really wish this color was the entire bottle. So that is what we're putting in the kiln. With that being said, let's get to it. Okay, now that everything's out of the kiln, let's take a look. Keep in mind that I glazed two dragon mugs, one of them with the crystal glaze that I usually use as a flux base, much like Mako Flux, and the other one with Mako Flux itself. I kind of wanted to compare the two, so that's what we're looking at. Before we look at those ones though, let's look at that carved bottle. Yo, you trying to hear something? You know, I'm not gonna lie, I'm, I'm really disappointed in this bottle. I think it's because I used that oil spot as a base glaze, and the oil spot's really, really dark, so I don't think I picked the correct glaze for this combination, but I will say I am really disappointed. But even a close-up look at this is just disappointing. I got no color, I essentially got brown with a bit of texture in it, and I'm, I'm not a fan of this at all. So red oil spot and the Mako Flux is a loss here. Now let's check out our Randy's Red Dragon Egg Mug with the Mako Flux right on the top of it. Ooh, I like this. I like this a lot. See, this entire thing here is Randy's Red, and for some strange reason my Randy's Red's not coming out as red as it used to be nowadays, but this Mako Flux did really well on the top here. This is a good Flux right here. If you look close enough, you can really see the color variation, and if I knew it made this, I would have doused the entire thing in Mako Flux and Randy's Red instead of just this top portion here, but we needed something to compare the original color to the top color of the Flux. Now the thing that we're comparing this against is technically my crystal glaze that I generally use as a flux on other glazes. And I've done this before, I already know how this is, but I want you to see the comparison here. Tell me about your wars, I miss the times. Miss the times when you breathe for me. I miss the times when you would lift up the sky for me. Bury my face in your chest, you were my eyes for me. But what I'm seeing from you now, it just don't look right. And what I'm hearing from you now, it just don't feel right. And what you're telling me, please guide it in. This is kind of a toss up for me, honestly. And the only real reason that I know that this is Mako Flux and this is my crystal glaze is because there's a giant drop of glaze right there that's starting to crystallize. And so this is a tell for me because I've used this glaze enough to know that this is in fact my crystal glaze. But if I didn't keep track and I didn't keep notes, I, I would have no idea which one of these is which, except for one's a bit lighter. And I have no experience with this glaze. So Mako Flux could have totally come out lighter. Let's take a look at that satin. No rebay and make a flux combo I did earlier. Very unfortunate, extremely unfortunate actually. The, the flux that I put at the top of this dragon scale mug did virtually nothing. Granted, there's a bit of it. You can kind of see it stopping about right here where I glazed the majority of the Mako flux. Let me get a close up of that. You can kind of see where the Mako flux started to develop what some would call micro crystals, but like it, it doesn't really look any different from the rest of the glaze, which granted this is, this is how the rest of the glaze just comes out naturally so i i'm very disappointed in this i see literally no difference in between using the glaze and not using the glaze i could have just used this entire thing in satin or ebay and it would have been fine but like this would have been the same exact result it's very unfortunate because i feel like i'm just choosing the wrong glazes to combine these with but we have combined them with like three or four different glazes 
and some have been company glazes and some have been my glazes and we've tested the base and the only thing that's really come out satisfactory is when we use the glaze by itself which I feel like a lot of people don't do in the first place because the name Mako Flux implies that it's supposed to be mixed in with other glazes either on top or below it to make some type of difference in the glaze, supposedly make it look more runny as Flux usually does. But I'm, I mean, I think maybe we're just getting unlucky, but I don't know if I'm willing to put in the effort to make a part three to this. Put it in the comments below if you really want it. But if you do, give me some suggestions. Don't just say make a part three because I might choose three more dud glazes, you know? Thank you for your patronage. I'm sorry to have to run up on you like that, but